Ron Mark. Well, Mr Chair, it's, um, I have to say it's quite interesting listening to the speeches from the two ma major parties in the House. Um, and I, I thank Mr Goff for um, reciting uh, a good part of my press release, because it was New Zealand First that actually found the DOD report. But the point he makes is a very valid one, I want to, and I will get to that. But what I want to address for a start, Mr Chair, is that it is something worthy of note that this government still has not produced a white paper. And when I came back to the Parliament, one of the first things I did when I got the defence portfolio back was to have a look to see where the white paper was at. And of course, all I could find was uh, the, 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 the existing white paper, which is under review, uh, and a statement in it saying that it would be reviewed in 2015. So naively expecting to see the defence paper reviewed in 2015. And I'm sitting here looking at this report here that says also on page four, and this is the latest Ministry of Defence annual report, 30th, 30th of June 2015, page four says, yes, that the defence white paper will be released in 2015. Well, it's actually 2016. And the, the point here, the reason I make that point is because we, are cont we have been subjected to a barrage of propositions for defence, and particularly in procurement, that are the very issues and the very points or the very subjects that should be addressed in the white paper and about which we should not be making any predetermined, uh, taking any predetermined positions or evaluations without the white paper. So trying the hard sell and the big spin on having us buy a C-17 and shifting our, our strategic lift from sea lift to airlift is a big proposition. That's what a C-17 is, it's a strategic airlift ca capability. Oh. And we would have thought to ourselves that we would have had a white paper first before we had that, that we would have evaluated that concept within the white paper before we started trucking them out and offering MPs rides in them and, and extolling the virtues of them, trying to sell them before we'd actually decided we even needed them. We know that there are questions around the NH90s and I think we share some of the same concerns as the Minister. And we probably don't necessarily accept the arguments of the former Minister of Defence because we know the problems. But these problems need to be addressed in the white paper. So we're looking forward to seeing that white paper. Same as the protector fleet. There are some issues in there. And the, the latest answers to the questions that New Zealand First have put up that reveal that some of our vessels have not been to sea for, in one case, four years, another one for three years, that We've gone from a high in 2011 of having 218 uh, days patrol, patrolling by our Navy and fisheries work to nine days patrolling, uh, dropping down steadily 2012, 13, 14, 15. 15, we're down to 33 days patrolling our fisheries. We would say these are serious matters. And these are the things that we would like to see discussed in the white paper and the solutions for those uh, proposed. So we're waiting out for that white paper. There is some good news. And the good news, I, I would say, is the announcement of the purchase of the LMT as a replacement to the god-awful style, which we should never have been bought in the first place. But there are problems in the backdrop of that too, Minister. And they, as I understand it, sit around the capability of that company to actually deliver the order and support the order, given the size of the scale of the New Zealand order for what they used to. So, but I actually said at the time, it was a good, a good decision. And let's see that rolled out because we need to get rid of that damn style. Something that I recommended from my man that they not buy, but you know, the government of the day went off and did that anyway, despite the advice of the army officers and NCOs and warrant officers on the ground. Um, but though I've got to come to the Iraq deployment. And I think on the back of a misinformation, I can't find any figures around what the misinformation campaign cost, the gagging campaign that was imposed on soldiers and the threats of being charged and court-martialed if they were found out to be talking to MPs. That sort of nonsense has no place in the New Zealand Defence Force, but it happened. It happened, and we're saddened by that. We, the, we questioned the deployment to Iraq, the expenditure of that money, and I guess it all came to a head with the very visit that Mr Goff was just talking about. How can we have the minister, the prime minister, reporting from Iraq uh, that the mission has been highly successful and we're achieving all these wonderful things as coalition forces, when at the very same time the Inspector General of the Department of Defence in the United States has issued a, a report slagging the entire mission, talking about the very things, about the poor equipment, the poor support for the Iraqi troops, the defections, the desertions, the absolute unbridled corruption 
And right at the time that all this is going on, <laughs> Mr. Chair. Are you calling Mr. Marks, Mr. Chair? Right. The Honourable Mr. 